Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give the thanks right now. Another day to always give the praise right now. Another day to always give the glory. Another day to always magnify and exalt his holy name. Another day to always put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Jesus. Because there's none too hard and there's nothing too difficult for our God. He have us in the palm of his hands and he, are, he, and he has already worked everything out. It's already been fixed. It's already been solved. And it's already been taken care of. Our job is to continue to walk by faith. And they say, Jesus, I might not understand it. I don't see it. But I'm trusting you. Give God some thanks right now. Give God some praise right now in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you please pray? Heavenly Father, God is coming for you right now today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this word that we better receive. I thank you for this powerful message, God, that we about to keep stay full on, God, and satisfied. We thank you, Father God, because you're still on the throne, and we know that you're still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, because we know that you're still in control, that you're still in charge. We thank you, Father God, that you have us in the palm of your hand. We thank you, Father God, that we're able to come to you today, God, and just talk to you today, God, and get whatever it was got off our chest to you, God. Father God, there's no place that we would rather be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, in your sanctuary, to praise you, worship you, glorify you, and magnify your holy name. Oh God, let your words rain down on your sons and your daughters today. Let the Holy Spirit just move through this place right now. Uh, your angels to join with us in praise and worship right now. Father God, I just want to say thank you right now. Thank you for this chance. Thank you for this opportunity. I just want to say thank you to all my sisters and brothers around the world, around the globe today, that we're able to fellowship today. Come together today as one body in Christ. Because your word say, well, two or more gather in your name, then you are in the midst. So, Father God, as we pray in God right now, we know that you're in the midst of this right here. We know that you're about to show up, and we know that you're about to show out. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you, for you to do a new thing in your daughter's life, a new thing in your son's life, a new thing in my life. Father God, you have your way in this place right now. You touch every last one of your children. In this place right now. Father God, I'm asking you to move and navigate. Father God, I'm also asking you to guide and direct our every footsteps. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every day is a day to say thank you. We love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I just want to get straight into this word, my brothers and sisters. Normally, I go through all the praise and the worship because praise is what I do. But it is something in my spirit that God actually wants me to just, just talk to somebody about. So it's a lot of people right now today, they think that they've grown. They think that they can do it and make it without you. And it's called life decisions. And sometimes we all make decisions thinking we know what's best for us. And we make those decisions. We have a price and a penalty that we got to go through. And right now, there's some people right now, they're paying that price. They are paying that penalty for the life decision that they made. They thought that they could, they thought they can do it and make it without you. They thought that they need you. They thought the grass was green on the other side. It doesn't matter what you try to do. It doesn't matter what you try to tell them. They left you thinking that you was going to chase after them. Don't you dare be no fool, my sisters. Don't you dare be no fool, my brothers. They left your house to let them stay out there. 
And right now, they're regretting it. Right now. But right now, they got some pride in the way. But eventually, pride is an abomination of God. Somehow, somehow, or sooner than later, God is going to have his way with that prodigal son. Somehow, some way, God going to have his way with that prodigal daughter. And they're going to have no choice but to go back and face you. Right now, they want to face you right now. But they're so ashamed because they don't think that you're going to accept them. They want to come back right now. But they so ashamed because they don't they don't think that you ever gonna see them the same anymore. They wanna come back so bad right now, but the devil still have his hand with them and he's playing with them right now. And he's still telling them, they coming after you. No, we not. You made that life decision, you made that dummy move when you thought that you was grown. See the whole point I'm making to somebody right now today, everybody's not grown as they think they say that they are grown. See, when you're grown, you make wise decisions. You don't make life decisions. There's a difference. When you are grown and you have responsibilities, you make wise decisions. But when you think that you've grown, when you think that you can do more than me, when you think that you don't need our help, that's when you make life decisions. And anytime you make a life decision, you are making a dummy move. Whenever that you are making a life decision, you're going to go through the pain. And you're going to go through the regret. And you're going to go through the penalty. Right now, you're going through it. I don't know who I'm talking to. Because we all have been there before. Thinking that we are grown. Thinking that we don't need the person who's been there for us the whole time. Oh, we don't need you. We can do this on our own. I told you I was going to win. Oh, I told you I'm, I'm not coming back. I told you I can do this without you. Go right on ahead. Now they are regretting right now. They tossing and turning right now. Can't sleep at all. Don't even know if they coming or going <clears throat> right now. Because of what? The life decision that they made. And there's too many people right now. They are claiming that they are grown. But see when you grown. When you really grown. You make wise decisions and you speak to God first on that decision to make sure God is this the right decision to make but too many people are thinking that they are God too many people are thinking that they are bigger and more powerful than God if God not chasing them don't you dare chase them my sisters if God not chasing them don't you dare chase my brothers let them make that dummy move and I promise you they ain't got no choice but to return back to God and say God I'm sorry I made a life decision, not a wise decision. I'm sorry, God, I made a dummy move and not a smart move. I'm sorry, God, I thought I was wrong, but I was nothing but a little pissy punk. I'm sorry, God, I thought I knew everything, but I actually I did. I'm sorry, God, I thought I was bigger and powerful for you and realized I needed you. Someone is crying at right now. Someone is pleading at right now. You may not see it. You may not hear it. But deep down in their soul, deep down in their spirit, they know they made the wrong decision because what they're doing right now, they are struggling right now. They are suffering right now. And right now, they don't even know how they're going to eat the next day. They don't know they're going to have somewhere to sleep the next day. They don't know they're going to have something to eat the next day. They don't know. They don't even know they're going to have a job the next day. They are are struggling to survive and when you're struggling to survive you make a life decision move which is considered a dummy move at this point blank period but they still want to be out there and the reason why they still trying to be out there because they still thinking that they trying to prove a point but don't realize it's called pride 
and pride comes before a man fall. Right now, that brother, that sister, that husband, that wife, that so-called friend, that son or daughter, they falling right now. But eventually, they're going to fall so hard, they're going to do nothing but to call on the name of Jesus. He's going to be right there and say, I knew that you was going to need me. He's not going to throw it in their face, but he's going to help them up. And he's going to show them the dummy move they made. We all need God. I don't care who you are. We all need Jesus in every point, in every aspect in our life. Don't you dare go out there making a life decision move without talking to God first. Too many people, you skip past God, say, oh God, I'll holler at you later. I got to make this decision right now because my family told me this is the best thing to do. Oh God, I'll holler at you in the rebound because my friends told me this is what I didn't do. God, I'll holler at you on the get up because the world is telling me it's better opportunities out there for me. There's another man out there for me. It's another woman out there for me. It's another job out there for me. But did God tell you another woman out there for you? Did God tell you it was another woman out there for you? Did God tell you if it was another job out there for you? If God didn't tell you that, you told yourself that, and them are called life decision moves, which is called irresponsible. Dummy moves. It was not smart about that what you did. Now you're going through it. Now you are facing the pain. You are facing the penalty. Now you are struggling just to try to make ends meet. You calling everybody else for help and favors, but you are so ashamed to ask the person who you know has your back for the favor. But eventually, you're going to have to ask him. Eventually, you're going to have to ask her. Eventually, you're going to have to make your way all the way back around. Because where you at is not real in the first place. Well, you thought that you was going to stay and reside at, that's not what God told you to stay at. If God didn't direct you there, you don't belong there. But he had to order your step just to show you. God had to order your step just to show you that you're going to need him. That's why you're still out there struggling and suffering the way that you're doing. Because he said, okay, I know when you're going to call on me. How much longer are you going to put up with that fakeness? How much are you going to continue to put up thinking that you're doing this and you're doing that when you ain't got nothing to show for? You ain't got two pennies to rub together. You broke, you're suffering, and you're struggling all at the same time. So God is sitting there saying, oh, you ain't hurting me. You ain't hurting God at the end of the day. You're actually hurting yourself more than you, than you actually hurting yourself more than what you even think and imagine. Pride. That's what it is. Pride. I don't care how much you love them. I don't care how much you care for them. If they left, you let them go. They made that life decision move. They made that dummy move. Everybody's not grown like they say they are. Everybody's not grown. That's why they're going through what they're going through right now. they suffering right now. they struggling right now. they going through it right now. They can tell you, oh, yeah, I'm doing good right now. Oh, I'm doing better than you. I'm going to tell you something, my sisters, my brothers. This one thing I know for sure, this one thing I know for a fact, this one thing I know for certain, my grandparents, my parents, always used to tell us, if someone got to tell you that they're doing good and they bragging about they're doing good, actually, they're not doing good. Because if someone is doing good, you're going to know about it and you're going to hear about it. If nobody's talking about, talking about them doing good, if you have not heard anything about them doing good, they're not doing good. Because if a person was doing good, you're going to know. If a person was doing what they said they were doing, you're going to hear about it. If you don't know, and if you don't hear, they're struggling, they're suffering, and they're hurting all at one time. I'm going to keep it real with you. I ain't going to sugarcoat it. 
They can say what they want to say, but they pump fake into you right now. They ain't got nothing going on like they say they, they got going on. They putting on the show. They putting on the act in front of the world. They putting on the show and the act on Facebook and social media. But Facebook, social media, Instagram don't care nothing about them because when somebody really know that you ain't doing good, it's going to show. And right now, they ain't doing good. They ain't doing good. They lying to you right now. And the moment they lie, say, oh, I don't need you. Oh, I'm doing good. I told you I can do it without you. It's already eating their spirit and their soul up right now because of the lie. Now, they still got to deal with their life decision because they lie. They just told you, saying that they're doing good. They can, they told you they can make it out, make, they can make it without you, that they winning. How? Did you see it? Are you hearing about it? If you don't see it, if you ain't hearing about it, they ain't doing good. I know that for a fact. You can try to run game on anybody, but you can't run game on somebody who's been hanging with the wise. You cannot run game on somebody who's getting their wisdom from the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit is going to let you know. They're not doing good. They're going through it. They're struggling and suffering just to make it. They are struggling and suffering just to continue to put on their fake show, their fake act to try to impress people. But the people they're trying to impress, they talking about them. They laugh behind their back, but they so small-minded, they don't even see it or realize it. But eventually, it's going to show. Eventually, the light will come to reality for the prodigal son and for the prodigal daughter. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Let's go to Luke chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 11 through 20. Luke 15, and we're going to read verses 11 through 20. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of my estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for his, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything there, was a severe famine in their whole country, and he began to be in need. Mm. So he went and hired himself out to be a citizen of that country, who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pot that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. I'm going to start right there. Do you see? He left, thinking that he was wrong. He left making a life decision. Not a wise decision, but a life decision. But nowhere in this text did his father go chase after him. His father knew that he was not ready. But his father said, okay, you want to be grown? You think that you don't need my help? You think that you can do this without me? You say that you're winning? I'm going to let you go. And he let him go. The moment that he left the house was the moment he went downhill. The moment he left the house, the moment he already fell. The moment... When their husband and their wife, their prodigal son, their prodigal daughter or friend left your house, that moment they failed. That moment they was doing bad. That moment the life decision that they made was going to come back to bite them in the butt. Right now they're not doing good as they say that they're doing good. They are suffering, they are struggling right now just to make ends meet. They are suffering, they are struggling just to make things happen right now. They don't have two pennies to rub together. And people from the outside see that and notice that. But they are so, they are so, 
they are so in, they are so in denial that they're putting on the show. They want people to think that they're winning. They want think people that they're shining. They want to think people. They want to let people know that they don't need a person who was there for them. That they don't need their help. But in the inside of their spirit, they cry. So I wish that my mother and father would come and get me. I wish that my brother and sister would come and get me. I wish that my husband would come and get me. I wish. That my, my wife would come get me. No. You made that life decision. You stay out there. I'm not chasing after you. Let them go. When they make life decisions like that. Everybody's not grown. To say the way they say that they're grown. The prodigal son right here. It shows you right here. That he was not grown. That he made a life decision. Not a wise decision. And this life decision that he made. It cost him everything. Everything he had in the beginning is gone. Everybody was his friends in the beginning. Now they're gone. Everybody was, was rooting for them in the beginning. Everybody was clapping for them in the beginning. Everybody was dancing with them in the beginning because of the life decision that they made but don't even real, realize the, 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 the party was set for them. The celebration was meant for them on their downfall. Because they knew that they couldn't make it without you. They knew that. Jesus already knew that the person that left you, Jesus already knew they can't make it without you. But right now, they're, they're telling people that they can't make it without you. They're telling people that they're winning. They're telling people that they mad, that we are mad because they're doing something better than what we're doing. How? Did you hear about they winning? Do you see they winning? If you don't hear about it, if you don't see about it, they ain't winning. They ain't doing. They ain't doing what they say that they doing. Everybody like to put up a front and show, but the reality of it, because the word says it right here, they in need right now. They in need of you right now today, my sisters. They are in need of you right now today, my brothers. But they have so much pride right now today. Pride won't let them, but they're ashamed for what they've done. Are you following what I'm saying? Right now, they don't know how they're going to eat. Right now, they eating stuff that they never thought they would eat. They eating Roman noodles every single day. They eating slop that they will never eat. They never thought they was eating. Right now, they don't lost so much weight, but they telling everybody they on a diet. Yeah, I know you're on a diet. It's called a hungry diet. It's called a suffering diet. It's called a struggling diet. It's called a life decision diet. That's why you're losing that weight. You ain't losing that weight because you want to lose that weight. You're losing the weight because of the dummy move that you made. That's why you're not going to recognize them when you see them because they're going to be so frail. You might as well get the party, you might as well get the party stuff right now. You might as well get the banquet ready right now because you're going to need a whole calf to fatten him up. You're going to need a whole calf to fatten her up because they're hungry right now because of the life decision that they made. I've been there before thinking I didn't need my parents, thinking that I was grown because I, what I do, I made a life decision. I thought I was grown. But I wasn't grown. I thought I was ready. But I never consult God first. I went over God head. Thinking I was bigger and better. And more powerful and strong than my God. But God had his way with me. I was out there eating with the pigs. Sleeping with the pigs. Talking to the pigs. And need more with the pigs. Until I, my stomach started growling so bad. I said I can't do it no more. I looked myself in the mirror and I said, oh, Lord, who was you? And I said, I couldn't do it no more. I didn't care what nobody else thought about me. I didn't care if people was going to talk about me. I had to make that decision and say, you know what, God? I'm sorry thinking I was bigger than you. I'm sorry, God, thinking that I was more powerful than you. I'm sorry, God, thinking I knew more than you. My, I had to come to my senses and say, I better me to go back home. Well, I can get my grub on. It's best for me to go back home where I ain't got to suffer and struggle the way that I'm doing. 
It don't make no sense. You got people out here right now today working two and three jobs, still suffering, still struggling, still trying to make ends meet because they're still trying to prove a point. That don't make you grown. It's called that you're making life decisions when it's called dummy moves. That's what it's called. And you think I'm going to chase after you? No. The prodigal father never chased after his son. He said, let him go. If he need me, he know where I'm at. He know where home at. And that's what he did. 17. Now he go to the key. Right now. There was somebody thinking right now. So don't let this person fool you. Don't let this person fool you thinking that they're not thinking this. Because they are. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food, food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. Right now, they're coming to their senses right now. They're thinking about it. Don't be a fool and don't act like they ain't thinking about it because they're thinking about it every single day. And they say, here I am, struggling. Here I am, suffering. Here I am, working like a dog. Here I am, Bust my butt. I ain't got nothing to show for. But here it is. My mother and my father got this to help me. Here it is that my wife have this to help me. Here it is that my husband have this to help me. Here it is that my friend had this to help me. But I'm here here suffering. I'm right here struggling. I'm right here hurting. I'm right here bleeding. I'm right here working like a Hebrew slave. And I don't have nothing to show for. So right now, don't you think they ain't thinking about that. Because they are. Pride still, there's some pride still right there. That's why they have not returned back yet. But eventually, they got to return back because the light bulb got to go off. How much longer are they going to continue to suffer the way they're suffering? How much longer are they going to continue to struggle the way that they're struggling? How much longer are they going to continue to starve themselves to death when they know they need something to eat? Do you think I'm going to be out there working two and three jobs just to make ends meet and don't have nothing to show for and I can take my butt back home and why I got to help it? And I can say, oh, I can relax for a little bit. Eventually, it got to come to their senses. Eventually, the light bulb got to come off. But they're still holding hand with the enemy right now. And that's the best shot that the enemy got to give us. You continue to throw that shot because I promise you, you're going to need Jesus sooner than later. This right here is an indication to let you know that the prodigal son say, I need Jesus right now. I need his help. We all come to that decision at one point in our life. When we make dummy move, we make that life decision. We say, Jesus, we need you. We have sinned against you and we're sorry. Please forgive us. We need your help. If they have not cried out to Jesus yet, get ready, my brothers. Get ready, my sisters. Get ready, mothers and fathers. Get ready, friends. Eventually, that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter, that prodigal husband, that prodigal wife will call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, I have sinned against you in heaven. Can you please help me? See, the reason why we can't chase after them. The reason why we can't go after them because we do it, they ain't learned their lesson. That means that we are giving them strength. No, God got to pick them up and God got to lift them up from their pigs. God got to pick them up and lift them up from the herds. God got to pick them up and lift them up from the dumpster, from the darkness they in. If we do it, they ain't going to teach them nothing because they're going to do it again. I know we might feel a certain way, say, but but God, that's our son out there. God, that's our daughter out there. God, that's our wife out there. God, that's our husband out there. God, to let them go. They made their life decision to leave. Let them go. If they want to return back, they know my name and they know where your home is at. But you let them sit out there. Right now, they sit out there with the pigs right now. Right now, they're eating with the pigs right now. Right now, they're sleeping with the pigs right now. And eventually, it's going to come to their senses. Because they're going to cry the name Jesus and say, Jesus, I can't do this no more. Because they're tired right now. They're beat up and they're dusty right now. 
eventually they will come to their senses. Whenever that you make life decisions, instead of wise decisions, you're not grown. You're not grown. And everybody's not grown. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who God is preaching to today. But eventually, that prodigal loved one will return back to you. Because everybody is not grown. Before you make a decision, you better, you better consult with Jesus first. Because if you don't consult with him, you're going to go through it. Just like the prodigal son did. And when the prodigal son came to a decision, came to his senses, he told himself, he said, Jesus, I'll never do it again. And he never did. Because when that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter, that prodigal wife, that prodigal husband come back, you best believe you're going to have no problem out of them anymore. If this word is for you, and you know God is talking to you, give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Withers.LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always praise him. Always worship him. Always glorify him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus, no matter what. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This is every minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.